Look at these Australian sandalwood trees. From Western Australia they are the seeds, but they're over a foot tall now. They're growing under a privet tree. I just wanted to show you how well they're growing because I'm in New South Wales, in the Lachlan Valley, and we have quite heavy frosts here, so they can stand the frost. Australian sandalwood from WA growing in New South Wales, and they can stand a heavy frost. But they are growing under a privet tree, so that privet tree would keep some of the coldness off them. I've got a few growing out in the open down in the paddock and they're still alive too. But these ones are doing better, I think. What's the Latin for Australian sandalwood? Santalum, is it acuminatum or is that the quandong? I'm not sure. These aren't quandongs, I've got quandong seeds planted too. But these come up so much easier than quandongs. These have an edible nut eaten by Australia's first peoples. They have an edible nut, but unlike the quandong, I don't think the fruits part is used. And of course they have a beautiful fragrant wood. Look at them, aren't they wonderful? I'm just amazed that they can stand the frost. I sort of thought that they mightn't be able to endure it. But it gets cold enough here to freeze the bird bath. But as I said, they are growing under a, a, a privet, so they've got an evergreen cover above them. I just hope they get big and yield us some nuts. I just grew these ones in a pot for fun as an experiment. So they're just growing in cheap potting mix. And here's another on this side. It hasn't been burnt or anything by the frost, look. It's nice and green and healthy. Australian sandalwood has a valuable fragrant timber. I think it's one of the world's most expensive timbers, isn't it? It is a parasite or semi-parasitic under the roots. This one's growing with a goji berry. It's in the same pot as a goji berry. So I think the privet too might have put its roots up into the pot, so it could be parasitizing the privet roots but it's just certainly able to stand the cold temperature and that pleases me and suits me. Just to give you an idea of how big they are. See, so more than a foot high, grown from the nuts, doing quite well. I'm down in the paddock now, and these two, I think they're uh, sandalwoods, I suppose they could be quandongs, I'm not quite sure, I think they're sandalwoods though probably. These ones are out in the exposed frost with no shelter above them, and uh, they're still alive. They don't look as happy, but they're still alive, so that's something. It just goes to show that sandalwoods can stand quite some heavy degrees of frost. I don't know that they'd grow in the coldest climates of Australia, like on the tablelands of New South Wales, but they can stand some degrees of frost. They've only got another month to get through, another month and a half to get through, and it'll, it'll be springtime. So, it can be said that sandalwoods at least are quite frost hardy. I think that sandalwoods, because I had a whole lot the man at Bush, Bush Foods Australia in uh, South Australia, I think his name was La Dudley, that's right. He gave me, when I bought some Kwandong seeds off him, he gave me a whole lot of sandalwood seeds for free. That was nice of him. He also gave me, um, he also gave me some nice dried uh, uh, Kwandongs, which was nice of him, and a piece of Kwandong candy as well. So, these are much easier to grow than Kwandongs. The seeds germinate much quicker. I'll just show you some little seeds I've got coming up in a pot. I think there are, I think they're sandalwoods too. I grew them with, in a low pot with loquats. Here's a little sandalwood coming up in a pot. There it is. Oh, there, where are you? There it is. That's a little sandalwood. 
and it's coming up in a pot with a loquat. Look, I've got a loquat for the host plant and there's the little sandalwood coming up there. Unless it's a quandong. I think it's probably a sandalwood. <laughs> Listen to that stupid dog just when I'm filming. <laughs> anyway, I've got a loquat and a bulb, a bulb of some sort, a little tritelia. That's a tritelia, but the uh, sandalwood is doing okay in a pot for the moment. When they get bigger, they can be put in the ground. And look just here. Here's another potted loquat. And I obviously went mad with the uh, obviously went mad with the sandalwood seeds. That's one. A sandalwood is coming up in a pot with a loquat. Of course the loquat was just grown from a fruit seed. But that's interesting, isn't it? How close can we get? We've got a healthy little sandalwood coming up there. There it is. Quite healthy and they're all enjoying the cold weather okay. This area where I'm filming is a bit quite shady. Quite shady. I'll just show you what's above so you know what the leaves are like. So there's a light cover of privet leaves just here. That would keep some frost off them, wouldn't it? Here's another small sandalwood coming up in a rather exposed position. They are a bit slower. But it's still alive and it's winter. I don't think it's a quandong. I think it's a sandalwood. So I just wanted to show you, that's the uh, sandalwood growing in a pot. I'll just show you how it's protected above by plenty of privet foliage. So that would help keep the frost off, wouldn't it? It would. Plenty of greenery to uh, reduce the uh, frost. That would help. Plenty of privet. Of course, this growing a sandalwood under the privet here was only an experiment. And uh, because it's uh, a uh, sandalwood, it's sort of semi-parasitic or whatever the term is with its roots. It can take up the sap of poisonous trees. So if you're going to grow them for food production, you wouldn't use a privet because privet is poison, isn't it? And uh, you don't grow privet, you don't grow sandalwood or quandongs under, say, a white cedar or an oleander because they'll take up the poison in their roots. So this is just an experiment, so I thought I'd spell that out. This is just an experiment. If we're going to grow uh, quandongs or sandalwood, we grow them near edible trees or trees that aren't poison, like gum trees or eucalyptus trees or acacia trees, yes. They do well under acacia. Look at those beautiful sandalwood leaves. See you then.